us. Man, I really love to fly this thing today, but this weather is so dang cold. How in the heck am I ever going to fly this thing out there? I'm never going to be able to do that. Well, on second thought, maybe I can try it. All right, guys, thanks for stopping by. Really appreciate it. It's really good to see you. This is your first time here. My name is Keith, and this is Alien Drones out here standing in the cold. I do mostly tech, drones, photography, and FAA news. If that's something that's of interest to you, you may want to hit that subscribe in case there's new content that might be of interest. And I'm doing giveaways on this channel, so make sure you're subscribed so you see when those pop up so you can win some good stuff. So as I mentioned, I'm out here in the cold. It's really windy and cold. It's a lot windier than I thought, but this is gonna be the best it's gonna be for a while. So I wanted to try to get this review in for you guys. The X7 Ranger Plus is a new product from EXO. And it's pretty cool because it does have a big thing you can see is obstacle avoidance on it. It has actually 360 obstacle avoidance from what I can tell. It only says 150 in the specs, but it actually works differently. And I'll show you how that works in a little while. So if obstacle avoidance is your thing, this is pretty cool and we'll show you how that works in just a minute. Now the place where this drone fits is it's going to be a lower cost drone but still high functionality. And what that means is that we aren't going to have a lot of the adjustability in like the camera and shutter speed and you're not going to be able to adjust the stick speed. It's not meant to be a professional manual kind of adjust everything yourself type of a drone. That's going to be more like the Cinemaster 2. And if you didn't see that video, I'll put that one up here so you can uh, take a look at that one because that one is more professional, allows you to adjust a lot more things, uh, smooth it out, things like that for cinema, of course, Cinemaster 2, like the name implies. So this one's going to be more, let's get up for a budget price, get some obstacle avoidance, get some dandy pictures, get some really good video, three axis stabilized gimbal, get out and get flying, get some good, good video. So this drone does have a 4K camera, but the pictures are going to be 4K but the video is not going to be 4k it's going to be 2k now that's like the uh, dji the uh, mini se uh, so that's not that unheard of uh, so a little bit more budget price the price is right now sitting at 274 dollars which is pretty freaking fantastic for something with these kind of features even if it's 2k video because you've got obstacle avoidance three axis stabilized gimbal sd card on board gps all the stuff that we really like so it is really fully functioned for 275 bucks uh, i'll put the links below so you guys can go and check it out as well but uh, we're going to give this a run for its money, see what it really does here. It does have about a half a mile range. That range is one of the things you give up for the price. But a half a mile, again, even though with this snazzy red, I mean, this is a pretty awesome looking drone here. Even with that half mile range uh, and the red, my guess is this is going to be right at the edge of the visual line of sight anyway. So it's probably going to be just fine. We'll give that a shot. I got a couple batteries. We'll see if we can do that. It's a little windy, so it's probably not super fair, but uh, we'll give it a shot. So because it's so darn cold out here and windy, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just give this a shot and try to make this quick. And if I start mumbling a little bit, it's because my lips are frozen, so don't hold it against me. So let's just do this. Alrighty, so we're gonna go ahead and calibrate this, uh, get this thing started. I've turned it on, and by doing that, I'm gonna do this uh, prepare to fly and calibrate, hit that button. There we go. Tells me to spin the drone horizontal. All right, now it's telling me do it vertical. So now we also have to do the gyro calibrate. We did the compass here, but we've got to do the gyro too, so don't make, uh, so make sure uh, we don't uh, forget that gyro calibration. It's the upper left button on the remote. You hold that for five seconds, it'll beat. That'll tell us that the gyro is in calibrated. So we're going to go ahead and do that. All righty, so now we've got the uh, gyro calibrated here. All right, so first let's uh, unlock the motors. There we go. And one button takeoff. There we go. And she is struggling with the wind. It is, it is quite a bit out here, I have to say. But one thing that I want to point out is that obstacle avoidance is kind of just chopping back and forth here a little bit is if you 
in the direction you're trying to go, the obstacle avoidance actually um, spins. So what that means is if your uh, drone is pointing this way and you're going forward, the obstacle avoidance points forward. And if you decide to go backwards, the obstacle avoidance spins 180 degrees and comes back. So it will give you a full 360 degrees of obstacle avoidance. So hopefully we can see uh, what the camera's seeing here. I'm gonna go ahead and start the video. There we go, start the video so we can see what the camera sees. Should be able to see me down here pretty soon. Hey, and there I am standing down here. We're gonna try it just to make sure to, that it works for you guys so we can see it. Uh, but the distance uh, that reaches out is pretty far, so even if you're trying to come towards yourself, it won't move. So uh, that can be a little hindrance, but uh, let me know in the comments if that's something that'd be interesting to you. Uh, that'll keep you from running into big trees and stuff like that, so that is a pretty cool bonus. Really nice for this price point. All right, so let's just go up and do a little fly around, see what this video looks like here. It does seem pretty snappy for sure. It's doing a good job. I can see it up there and that red is really uh, quite visible up in the sky. Now we do have a gray sky here today so maybe that makes it a little easier. But it is pretty visible. I can see it uh, pretty easily here. And that's pretty good. It's, uh, it's moving pretty good up there actually. And uh, I'm going directly against the wind right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with the wind a little bit. Oh yeah, that makes a big difference. There's quite a headwind here, so. All right, and we just hit our uh, low battery. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, coming home right now. So we're gonna go ahead and let it do that uh, now that we flew around. I'm sure that battery is cold and the battery life goes way down uh, when uh, it gets this cold. So uh, I'm gonna be able to put in that other battery and then uh, do a couple of the other quick functions here and uh, we'll go from there. There it goes. Okay, and you can see where that came down here. We were about uh, maybe 10, 15 feet off or so, so it uh, isn't uh, perfect uh, on the pad. I'm gonna pull the obstacle avoidance off so we can do uh, orbit and some follow me because otherwise I think we're gonna have some trouble. So let's go ahead, and change the batteries and uh, give those a try. All right, so first let's, let's do an orbit of all of us here and uh, see if it can orbit around us, see what it looks like. There's not too much around. There's a pole over here I gotta be careful of. But other than that, I should be okay. Do this orbit mode. All right, so it, I pushed the orbit and it uh, went away from me here. And there it is orbiting. Let's see if we can point down a little bit so we can see what we're orbiting. Okay, and there it goes. All right. Oh, yep, there we are. And indeed, it is uh, circling away, so. So there we are from a little higher and it is still orbiting me. Uh, so that's really nice. That's really nice. Hey, dude. Hey. No, as long as you don't mind being on YouTube, have a, have a go. So the next one is the follow mode here. So we're gonna go ahead and drop this down and uh, see if it follows me here. There we go. Okay, so there we are in the picture. Let's go ahead and do this follow. 
All righty, so now it's up here above me and uh, let's just see what this does here. See if it follows me along here. Up oh, there it goes, sure enough, it is uh, spinning towards me now. There we are, I'm in the picture. Let's just kind of go back this way. It's doing a pretty good job, actually, keeping me in the middle there. There we go. All right, go back a little more here. See me walking up in the snowbank here. All right, so that seems to be doing its thing here. Let's just do a quick waypoint here. I don't know if my fingers are going to work on the screen, but let's... Uh... Okay, so there we go where we landed off here and uh, let's go warm up and uh, finish this off in the studio. All right, so we are back in the studio after those darn cold flights and I thought I would do a quick summary of what we found when we were flying the X7 Ranger Plus from XO. Overall, it was a pretty good flyer. I did note that the battery life was about 20 minutes, just under 20 minutes, and that's not too bad considering that the cold weather does affect batteries and these types of batteries do get a little better after they're charged a few times and I only had them charged a couple so perhaps that will get a little better if we have some warmer weather and get a few charges on them as well. Now one thing I wasn't really that concerned about is that the video was not 4k and it was only 2k but even at 2k I don't mind because YouTube publishes most of the time in 2k anyway but there was some jitter in the image which surprised me but that could be due to the fact that the gimbal was cold. Uh, we were flying it below the temperature spec, so things get stiff and you might have a little jitter. So you probably will have a little better performance uh, in some warmer weather. And if it, there is a little jitter left, uh, you can use a program like DaVinci Resolve, which I use. And the free version even allows you to do some stabilization. So even if that's something that's an artifact of this uh, gimbal, uh, not just a cold, uh, you can take that out in post, so that shouldn't be a problem. Now also, the obstacle avoidance did work great. Uh, anytime I was around trees or a building or a car, myself even, anything like that, it would stop on a dime when I was in low speed. It said that it wouldn't operate at high speed, but I found that it did operate. But of course, the stopping distance was probably too long. It probably wouldn't avoid a crash all by itself. So they say if you're going to be using the obstacle avoidance, that you should be using it in the low speed. But that being said, the obstacle avoidance is best used when you're flying in an open area and you just have maybe a few things in the distance that are going to be in your way. Because if you are flying in the midst of some trees in a tight area, a lot of times uh, like I usually do, and even in uh, the areas like I showed in this video, 
even if you're trying to bring the drone towards yourself or just get close to a car or maneuver it, if it sees anything within that 20 foot range, it will just stop in its track. So if you're in an area that's kind of surrounded, you can't move it uh, any way except for up and down. And if it drifts towards a tree, you can't back it away once the obstacle avoidance sees it because the second you flip and try to go backwards, the obstacle avoidance turns around, sees you standing behind it, for instance, and it won't move away. So you do have to be very careful. The obstacle avoidance is great. It does do a good job, but it could be a detriment if you use it improperly. So really be careful that you're using it in the proper area and it'll do just fine for you. It's pretty cool. So my point in doing reviews like this is not to give you guys an in-depth tutorial of every function, every control, every button, and show it how it works in every minute detail. My point is to give a review of the overall product, the value of, that it offers, if it stands up to what the manufacturer says, or is there some little white lies in there that maybe are misleading. And in this case, I don't believe that's true. I believe it does what uh, it says. And I think it's a pretty good value given the price and all the different functions that this does have. But that being said, if you would like me to do a follow-up that is more of a tutorial and gives every little detail of every function, uh, every adjustment, every setup in the remote, and how to do every single thing on here in uh, minute detail, let me know in the comments. Uh, maybe that's something that I'll do if there's enough interest. And with that, don't forget to hit that like button if you found any value in this video at all. I really do try to give you guys some value, so I do appreciate it when you click that like. It's free, I promise. Until next time and next video, good flying.